take a minute and talk about enantiomers of 2,3-pentadiene. Now this one's a little bit tricky, but 2,3-pentadiene has, of course, five carbons. Um, so you have a carbon, 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 carbon. This is one, this is two, this is three, double bond, double bond right here. Right, then that makes this a CH3, makes this a CH3, and then we have an H off of this guy and another H off of that to give us a total of four bonds on the ends. So how are these enantiomers? Well, you have to look kind of carefully here at this central carbon. What's going on right there? So let's build this up down below. So we'll start off here with our carbon atom, put a little circle around it. Now that carbon right here is sp hybridized. So sp means that we have a p orbital pointing up and down, right? And then another p orbital kind of going back here and coming out facing forward, right? So kind of like a wedge and dash in and out of the plane of the page. Now that carbon's connected to a neighboring carbon over here. So we're connected here to that carbon and we're connected over here to another carbon atom. All right, so it kind of looks crudely something like this. Now over here on the left hand side, I'm gonna put our orbitals for the pi bond, p orbitals going in and out of the plane of the page. So it's the overlap of that orbital there and the orbital back behind here that makes our pi bond, right? Now, because that's going in and out of the plane of the page, it's gonna put a substituent here and here in the plane of the page. So something's gonna go here and something's gonna go right there. Right? And that's kind of where this idea of enantiomers is coming in this problem. Down here at the end, on the other side, on the right-hand side, we need to align our p orbitals going up and down. So we're gonna come over here and down here. And the combination of that overlap gives us another pi bond. Now, the, the orientation of the p orbital on this carbon at the end forces the substituents to go in and out of the plane of the page. So there's a substituent here and a substituent there. Now, you've got a methyl and another methyl here. So in essence, we can kind of switch around the positions of these to end up getting you know, different enantiomers. So we could start off here, put our CH3 here, and an H at this position, All right? But that would give us a CH3 here and an H there, and we're just picking that, right? We could choose to flip-flop that if we wanted to. So that's one of our structures. So the other structure can be drawn a little bit easier if we look down below here. So let's go back to bond line structures here. We've got a carbon, double bond carbon, double bond. We said that was an H, that is a CH3. Then we had a wedge and a dash here with a CH3 and H there. Now, if that was our mirror, then we could draw the enantiomer over on the other side of course, we've got our carbons all still in a straight line, right? Now we're gonna have an H atom coming up like so, right? A CH3 pointing down. And that's because these are reflected, right? So that's, that's where those are coming from there. And then the other position gives us a CH3 here and an H atom right there. Right, so it turns out that no matter what we do, these two uh, mirror images are non-superimposable, which makes them enantiomers. Well, this part of the video is going to be devoted to mastering chemistry. So if you're uh, if you're not using this for your class and you can just skip ahead. But anyway, looking at this for uh, our class right now, the way that we're gonna enter this is we're gonna just start putting in our structure essentially. So what do we need? Well, we need to start off with carbon. Right, so put, let's go to line structures here. So we've got a carbon, put another one in here, another double bond there. So now you've got your CH2s both on, on both ends there. 
Um, and just to align that a little bit, I want to come around here and give it a little bit of a turn just to make it look a little bit prettier. We're not going to worry about that bend there or anything like that. Okay. Now, the first structure that we drew on that previous page had a H and a CH3. And that's an H that's up here, so I'm going to mouse over and just hit the letter H. That's going to save us some time. And then now we need to put a wedge and a dash here. So we got a wedge here, and then we have a dash at this position here. So this should grade it um, correct whether or not you put the H's in, because the H's are understood to be there. Well, I'll go ahead and just put them in just like this. Let's take a look here. Put this in. So we've got our carbon carbon double bond. A double bond here. Right, popping that up, pulling this thing down, just like so. That's the H. We have a little wedge dash right here. And that's an H right there. And uh, so let's come down here. And we keep our fingers crossed. Hit submit, and that looks good. Um, if this is not being graded correctly, one thing you can try to do is just you can try to just remove those H's. And, uh, and see if mastering is happier with your input that, that way. Um, so that, that's another thing to try. So hope that works, guys.